Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to the latest instalment in my weekly reading slash writing vlog. I don't have too much to report. I'm currently sat here listening to uh, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood for uh, the re-readathon. I got my eye on you. One false move and I'm dead. Listening to it at 1.5 times speed. I was actually supposed to finish rereading that in March, but I, I fell a little bit behind. But uh, I'm catching up now, and then for April, my reread is going to be Guards, Guards by Terry Pratchett, which I'm very much looking forward to. So, uh, stop pinging. Sorry, tweet deck. So, yeah, uh, I don't have much other than that to report because I've just literally just finished the outro for uh, last week's vlog. But yeah, I thought I'd say hi and get, us, get the ball rolling. All right. I don't know if you can see that, but it's hailing. Great. I'm watching Cody, Cody's book corner. Uh, Biggie is here. Hi hey, Biggie. Hello. Can you say hi to your legions of adoring fans, Biggie? Jeez. Okay. I'll leave you to it because I don't want him to. I don't want him to leave me. Um, yes, it is Tuesday. There's an open mic on at the moment, but um, I'm working some more because just money is tight. So I need to do lots of work to make as much money as possible. But uh, I've pretty much finished reading. It's a Battlefield by Graham Greene. This one's like a three out of five. Uh, sorry, three point five out of five for me. Maybe three point two five actually, somewhere between. And um, it's basically about um set in, in kind of england in i don't know the time period actually i'd want to say like yeah 1930s i would have said 30s 40s something like that and um uh, basically this communist has been arrested and um he's facing um execution because he killed a policeman and this guy says that he was just protecting his wife because he thought the policeman was going to hit his wife and uh, it's just really well written it's a very human story which is what green's good at and um yeah, maybe it touched too much romance for me, but uh, you know, I still enjoyed it overall. And just yeah, some of the characters, some of the choices they made, they they, they weren't particularly nice people. But uh, oh no, he's going. But uh, yeah, yeah. So that's what I thought of that. And then after that, I think I'm going to read um, Wilfred Owen Anthem for Doomed Youth. Uh, Penguin Little Black Classic number 50. The great First World War poet portrays firsthand the horror, devastation and futility of the trenches. And I really like stuff about the war in general. I just find it really fascinating. I've read some of Wilfred Owen's um, poetry before as well, some of his war poems. So I'm just looking forward to kind of getting stuck into that little collection. Should be good. All right, happy Friday. I am sitting here listening to Guards, Guards by Terry Pratchett. Get your pig sausages five for two dollars, said Throat. We never let a conversation stand in the way of trade. Could be good for business, good monarchy. And um, I I'm currently listening to that actually because I'm uploading my March wrap up video and my internet basically, it doesn't let me stream anything if I'm uploading. So as long as this video is uploading, I figured I might as well listen to some audiobook and maybe do some filming. So I appreciate I haven't updated you that much this week. I honestly, I wish I had a better excuse. I've just been working. Um, my sleep has also been knackered as well. That's why it's, it's currently 7 a.m. I did go to bed, but I couldn't sleep. So um, I'm pretty much just going to stay up. But I have some books to update you on. So I read... Um... Oh, it's upside down. Here we go. So I read Monty, His Part in My Victory by Spike Milligan. So this is volume three of Milligan's War Diaries. And it was pretty good, but at the same time, there's a lot of like troubling language in here. Like uh, the racial slurs, the, the, the N word and the W word he uses a lot. He also drops the C word a lot as well. So there's a lot of like bad language and also like I say, what we would consider slurs today. I guess at the time they were kind of more forgivable. And they are using a humorous sense, it's just, that, that kind of humour doesn't fly anymore really, you know? But I enjoyed it enough. It's also got like lots of photos throughout and stuff which kind of helps to bring it to life. I find Milligan's humour hit and miss sometimes. So sometimes it hit and sometimes it missed. But overall I gave this like a, like a 3, 3.5 out of 5. And uh, yeah, then I have Anthem for Doomed Youth by Wilfred Owen, Penguin Mini Black Classic number 50. The great First World War poet portrays firsthand the horror, devastation and futility of the trenches. I'll read you one of these so you can get a feel. You've probably read Owen before, you've probably studied him if you studied the war at any point. Uh, hospital Barge. Budging the sluggard ripples of the Somme, a barge round old Cerisi slowly slewed. Softly her engines down the current screwed, and chuckled softly with contented hum, till fairy tinklings struck their croonings dumb, the waters rumpling at the stern subdued. The lock gate took her bulging amplitude, gently from out the gurgling lock she swum. 
one reading by that calm bank shaded eyes to watch her lessening westward quietly then as she neared the bend her funnel screamed and that long lamentation made him wise how unto avalon in agony kings passed in the dark barge which merlin dreamed so yeah this was like a 3.5 maybe a 4 out of 5 it's not really my kind of poetry to be honest but i do find the subject matter interesting it's obviously very touching and very moving as well I also read Last Breath by Karen Slaughter, so I basically picked this up because my mum and my grandma both like Karen Slaughter, and I know Harriet Rosie also does. And actually, I've seen other people pick up Karen Slaughter because of Harriet Rosie and then enjoy it. So I, I saw this actually when I was in Spain in like October last year. I picked it up, finally got round to it, and did really enjoy it. So I hear that like Slaughter's really good at writing like relationships between women, and she did that very well here. There are also lots of twists and turns. I mean, it's pretty much a novella. It actually reminded me of The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. But I really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed this as well. I gave it like a 3.75, maybe even a 4 out of 5. And um, yeah, I'd definitely read some more Karen Slaughter. Okay, and then we have Death Note Volume 2 by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. And uh, yeah, this just continues the series really. I don't want to say too much about it. But I bought the box set, so I'm actually, my current read now... I'm currently reading number 3. Uh, I'm not that far in. In fact, have I lost my page in this? Better not have lost my bloody page. No, I haven't. There we go. So I'm about this far in now, which isn't very much because obviously you read from uh, right to left. But I'm really enjoying this series. I actually probably enjoyed number two more than number one. It's a solid, again, like a 4.5 out of 5 for me. And we're getting to bits now that I don't remember from the movies. I've seen the Japanese movies and the, the bad American one as well. So um, now that it's getting to bits that I don't remember... I'm, in, I'm enjoying it more because I don't know where the story is going to go and I also don't know how it ends. So now that I've got kind of hooked and I've whizzed through the first two and I'm kind of going through the third one, I'll probably, probably try and finish it over the next couple of weeks. So yeah, that's where I'm at and now I'm going to go and do a bit more filming and stuff. I'm actually all up to date with work because again, because I've been nocturnal and I've literally just been waking up and working until I go to bed and then repeating. And uh, so for about two, three weeks, that's pretty much all I've done. And uh, I finally like done all of my work so now I can just react to stuff as stuff comes in I can just to turn it around straight away you know so that's quite nice and I have a driving lesson in four hours and again I haven't been to bed but I feel awake enough to drive so we'll we'll, we'll see all right I sit here with the door open because bloody derpy cat what are you doing why are you sitting down there Jesus <laughs> I'm going to do some laundry later, hopefully. That's the plan. Okay, so it is Sunday morning. It's five past nine. I woke up at 2 a.m. today, so this whole sleeping thing is going... I don't know what, what I'm doing anymore, to be honest. But I'm hoping that today I will get some laundry done. I need to go and get my meds from the uh, pharmacy as well, so I'll go to do that with a little walk. I want to do a little bit of editing here and there. I'm all caught up with work as well. So other than that, it's going to be a writing day. I've hit uh, 21,000 words on my work in progress, which is good. Uh, it's a book called uh, Monsters of Rock. And it's about this like fictional rock band, basically. It's like Spinal Tap meets Lord of the Rings. Tw yeah, 21, 2, 3, 4 on that. And then I've also been editing Meat, which is my novel set on a factory farm. So this is actually my first read through of it. I'm going to do some editing as I go. And then I'm going to send that to my editor called Pamela's Harris. And uh, we'll, yeah, get going with editing with that. And also Netflix and Kill, the sequel to Driven, is now with the publisher as well. So I'll keep you updated. And yeah, Meat is on page 282 of 456. So I'm getting there. Uh, I wanted to quickly update you on some reading that I've been doing. So I finished Death Note Volume 3 by Sugumi Oba and Takeshi Abata. And I don't know really what I can say about this that I haven't said with the others. I gave this one like a 4 out of 5 though. I think I've, I'm, I'm actually having a break now. So I'm now reading Death in the Clouds by Agatha Christie. To give me a little bit of a break from Death Note. Because I think I was reading them too close together. And my, my brain needs time to process what's happened, you know? So I gave this one a 4 out of 5. But again, purely because I read 2 and then 3 back to back. One other thing to mention as well, just one of my bedtime books, I finished reading My Dearest Father by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And this is letters that Mozart and his father wrote to each other. And it's quite interesting because, like, I saw a video that Filthy Frank did uh, a few years ago where he talked about, like, Mozart. He was obsessed with people licking his ass. He was like, Mozart loved to lick ass. And it's true, he did use the phrase in one of these letters, like, oh, and I made him lick my ass or something. Very strange. And uh, it was interesting to read as well the relationship he had with his dad because his dad was just like constantly haranguing him and being like come on Wolfgang stop being useless and do this and uh, 
And then when his mum died as well, he wrote to his dad to say, like, mum's not very well, knowing that his mum was dead. So that then he could write another letter to his dad being like, yeah, she's dead, but he'd have, he'd have softened the blow. And his dad wrote one back in between where he's like, I figured it out, she's dead, isn't she? And you're not telling me she's dead. It was all very, like, Jeremy Kyle. But, um, yeah, pretty interesting, actually. I, I did enjoy reading it. I gave it, like, a 3.5 out of 5. I, when I started reading it, I was kind of dreading it and thinking I wasn't going to enjoy it. But, yeah, it was good. All right, time to go and be productive, I guess. Uh, I finished listening to my audiobook of Guards, Guards by Terry Pratchett as well, so I need to do my review of that later. That was for uh, my April re-readathon. Hooray! Today, I am planning on making this vegetarian beef roast with red wine and shallot glaze and uh, some veg and stuff and uh, yeah and then some rhubarb crumble oh my goodness it's ready and i am excited and i'm watching a documentary about flat earthers my vegan kind snack box arrived and i'm watching charlie hey charlie um, hey cat do you mind those are my clothes i want to wear those please Okay, it is Tuesday and I am the tiredest person on the planet. I have a sore throat as well. Um, yesterday, I, uh, for some reason, well, I got bored, so I decided to make some music, so I ended up recording myself rapping. I also wrote a new song as well, and I learned to play Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones, so that was very nice. According to my Fitbit, I had like 35 minutes of sleep. I actually think I had about two and a half hours. I was having really bad heart palpitations. Um, and also like my feet were getting super cold but then part of me was like sweating and like uh, all like feverish and stuff so it wasn't wasn't good but uh, I did eventually get some sleep uh, as I say it is Tuesday I have, a few, I have a few books to update you on and then uh, this evening I think I'm going to go to the open mic even though I'm exhausted because one of my friends is leaving so it's like the last chance to say goodbye and whatnot so I probably won't drink but I might play a few tunes uh, we will see so yeah, let's have a look at the books. So I read Death in the Clouds by Agatha Christie. Uh, this is a Hercule Poirot novel. I hadn't actually heard of this one until I got it. It was pretty good though. There's basically a murder, happens on an aeroplane. There is some weird bits with like an Indian blow dart or whatever, I, you know. You know how, uh, it, it actually felt like Sherlock Holmes, like like a Sherlock Holmes knockoff there with this kind of old, this old approach to, you know, the British imperialist approach to the world and all these pygmies with their little blow darts and stuff. So uh, yeah, I don't know, that didn't work so, so well. But actually as a story overall, it worked quite well. And like the, the characters were interesting because some of them I just didn't care about. And some of them I thought were like really fleshed out and three dimensional and really did care about. So there was a good mixed bag there. Overall I gave it like a 3.75 out of five. Then I finished reading my bedtime book, which was Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. This is also the last book in, uh, like there's a box set of these, there's six of them by Robert Frederick, like children's classics. So I'm actually gonna do a wrap up as well and go from my least favorite to my most favorite. This one I gave like a 3.5 out of five to. Unfortunately, I've never really been one for like the the trope of having like animals that can talk in books or that, that, that even tell the story as is the case in this. Like it just reminded me of War Horse by Michael Morpurgo. And I didn't really like that because I don't like animals telling the story. But yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I can see why it's a classic. I can see why people like cry and stuff. It didn't make me cry, but uh, yeah, it was it was good. And I liked what it had to say about animal welfare and stuff as well. And it did a good job of showing that like some people are good with animals and care for them, and some people are just evil and shouldn't be allowed around them. Okay, and then finally, I finished Death Note Black Edition Volume Four by Takumi Oba and Takeshi Abata. This one I gave like a three point five out of five to because we're getting to a point now where the series is getting a little bit samey. So the first, like I said, it sort of went from good to great to pretty good, and then this one was just okay. And part of it is as well is because I'm sort of struggling now to track who's touched the Death Notes and who the owners are and all this stuff. We have a lot of new characters coming in and kind of coming and going. Uh, we have a major character death as well, which I'm not convinced is actually going to be, like I'm not convinced that they're actually dead even. But um, yeah, that was that kind of put a damper on things as well. But yeah, yeah it was all right. I'm glad I read it. And I am still going to read to the end. I just think it's sort of starting to lose some steam a bit, but we'll see. And now, 
I am reading Film It Cuts, Luchador Monkey Crisis by Ollie Jacobs. So these are indie short stories. I may review this for Tarden Danes, indie read along, and I also may not. Um, we will see. We'll see if I think I've got enough to say about it. But yeah, uh, I am enjoying it so far. It's going to be quite a short read, as Ollie Jacobs' stuff is before. And the first book in this series, Film It Cuts number one, was uh, in my top ten books of the quarter. So, so there's that as well. All right, so that's me pretty much up to date, and um, yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to do a quick bit of editing. I've got a package to open as well, and then I'm going to jump in the shower, and then I'm going to go to this open mic night. Go shopping, and then I'm gonna get Biggie some treats. It looks like uh, and hocus pocus. Yeah. Here in the Doomsday Book in 1086. This window frame is thought to be part of the Tudor farmhouse. This reminds me of going into bunkers in Berlin. We like camping. Oh, you, you've got a lot. Like, living somewhere like this, you Yeah, I'd be happy with it. Just need some space for some books. Jane Eyre. What else we got? Tale of Two Cities. I can imagine there would be.
look who I've got. Hey Biggie. Say hello to the internet. Okay. Um, today is Saturday and I'm very hungover and I also apologise, I haven't, I've kind of filmed bits here and there but I haven't filmed like an actual update for a few days. Basically my mum came to visit so um, yeah she came on the Thursday and um, yeah we watched Agatha the, and the Truth of Murder on Netflix which is like a fictionalised account of uh, what happened during Agatha Christie's famous disappearance because my mum's a big Agatha Christie fan as well. So, um, yes, we watched that, and uh, she did her knitting while I did some work. Then on Friday, we went to uh, Hewenden Manor, which is like a nearby National Trust property, and uh, it was quite interesting. So Benjamin Disraeli used to live there, and he was Prime Minister and like best friends with Queen Victoria, and so there was a lot of stuff there. There was also some stuff about how it was used during the war. So um, it was the hillside map makers were there, and they uh, like did, the, did lots of the maps that the RAF you know bombers used to bomb Germany so yeah that was pretty cool and then on Friday night it was the open mic at the art center uh, my mum was gonna come but she was too tired from all the walking around which is fair enough uh, and that's why I'm hungover as well and now it's Saturday so earlier today I went uh, we, well we went to Aylesbury and it because it's kind of on the way back for her and I could get just a train home and we went around some of the charity shops so I got a haul to film in a bit although my microphone is broken so I need to order a new microphone and other than that, I've just mostly been doing work. I'm actually doing some more work today as well. And uh, in the meantime, I have some books to update you on as well. So I can't actually remember where I'd got up to last time. So we're just going to go through the ones I have here. So, so I have Ryunosuke, I have a Ryunosuke Akutagawa, The Life of a Stupid Man, number 56. Japan's modernist master explores family art and the fear of madness in exquisite autobiographical pieces and a short story. And this was awesome, actually. I'm going to read... Um, part of the, I think yeah part of the life of a stupid man because these are quite short sections and it can give you a feel for his writing style so uh, we'll go with fight he had a quarrel with his half brother that ended in a physical brawl true he was a constant source of pressure for this younger brother who in turn cost him a good deal of freedom relatives were always telling the young man be like your brother but for him this was like being bound hand and foot locked in each other's grip they fell near the edge of the veranda he still remembers the one crepe myrtle bush in the garden by the veranda. It's load of brilliant red blossoms beneath the sky about to drop its rainy burden. So yeah, it was really beautifully written and I'd like to read more of that because it is like a little series of like monologues basically and those are like the sort of short autobiographical stories. I'll give that one a four out of five, I think. We have The Reckoning by Edith Wharton. So this is number 48. From the great writer of turn of the century New York, two devastating portraits of lonely widowhood and an unconventional marriage. And... I've got to be honest, I don't remember this. Did I even read this? I'm actually not even sure if I read this. I don't think I did. I'll have to check. So if I did read it, I guess it didn't leave much of an impression. And uh, then we have Film It Cuts, Luchador Monkey Crisis by vol uh, Volume 2. Short stories by Ollie Jacobs. So I was going to read this for Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. But I don't know if I'm going to do a review of it. I don't have too much to say. So with, uh, this is like a short story collection with 10 short stories. And with the first short story collection... I had something to say about every story, you know, so it was, it was really good because of that actually, it made it into my top books of the year, but with, with this one, it was a bit more hit and miss, which is kind of typical for short story collections, I still gave it like a 3.5 out of 5, but um, yeah, I would say start with Film It Cuts 1, and um, maybe check out my review of that, I'll link to it below, and uh, if you enjoy that, then get this, you know, and then finally, we have here uh, Death Note Black Edition Volume 5 by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. And uh, my current read, which is a Volume 6, uh, and I'm about probably a third of the way through of that. And this one here is the last one in the series as well, so I'm getting towards the end. It got a bit, I don't want to say boring, but I didn't like it as much for a little while. It kind of, well, there was after a major death, basically, and, it, and that was my favourite character. And I also realised, like, early on when I was reading it, I didn't, want either side to win or um, be and, and that was because like I liked by both sides but now it's like I'm kind of indifferent about both sides so I still don't have a favorite that I want to win but I just sort of care a bit less I guess but um yeah so that's where I am I am with that and I'll hopefully finish that like tomorrow so yes so I'm going to go and nurse my hangover and just do a bit of work. I'm watching Dracula, the untold story at the moment. And uh, yeah, I, sh I guess I'll go and film this uh, little book haul as well. So yes. Oh, hello, it is Sunday. I shall mostly be working today. I have been watching this thing on Netflix and I'd love to tell you what it's called, but I've forgotten. It's called Black something. And it's like a zombie thing. 
Black Summer, it's called Black Summer. Alright, and uh, yes, yeah, so I've been watching that, I'm on the last episode of that now. I have been doing a little bit of booktubing here and there, doing some editing of a couple of reviews, a little bit of filming. After filming this, later on I want to do a, a, like a little writing update, and also I have a review of Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett to do. So I'm going to film those, do a bit of editing potentially, we shall see. And uh, yeah, also got to do some work, so I have been doing that. Yesterday I had to write a list actually, I had to write an article on uh, the top 10 psychedelic books. And I've read like maybe four. I need to sneeze. <laughs> oh. oh, that's better. Oh. Uh, I hope that was as satisfying for you as it was for me. So I read a couple of the books that I hauled from the charity shops yesterday. So I read The Ladybird Book of the Sickie and The Ladybird Book of the Hangover by, uh, I think it's J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris. Yeah. And um, I've just been collecting these as and when I see them because they're about six pounds each. And they're like just like parody kids books. So for example, The Ladybird Book of the Hangover, what have we got here? Peggy is trying the hair of the dog to get rid of her hangover. She was drinking gin last night, so a sip from the gin bottle will help to put her body back in balance. Peggy does not know where the recorder came from. She does remember stealing a busker's hat for her cab fare home. Maybe that explains it. So yeah. Um, yeah, they're quite enjoyable. I gave, I gave the, uh, the hangover four stars, the sicky 3.5. And I think I just enjoyed The Hangover more because I was hungover when I read it. I'm actually still a bit hungover. I have a bit of a two-day hangover. That's terrible. Um, but yeah, they were good. Enjoyed those. And now I'm just coming to the end of Death Note. This is Death Note Black Edition Volume 6 by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. And uh, I've got about 50 pages to go. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to finish reading Death Note today. And uh, then I will give you like... Um, Another update when I finished it with my thoughts on the end of the series. And then that seems like a good place to end this reading vlog. So yeah, we did two weeks in this one. Hey. Alright, I'll catch you in a bit anyway. I've finally caved and I've been watching The Disappearance of Madeleine McCann. But uh, I want to talk to you about some books. So, they, so yeah, let's do that. Alright guys, I ended up doing just loads more work last night. But I did finish some more books. So I, I will uh, talk to you about those and then we'll round this off. So, uh, so this is volume 12, uh, volume 6 of Death Note. Sorry, Death Note Black Edition bringing together volumes 11 and 12 from the original uh, you know, comic bind-ups or whatever. This is by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. I really enjoyed the ending. Uh, I did kind of know what was going to happen because it turns out I think I have seen up to the ending of the series in like the Japanese movie versions or whatever. So I kind of knew how it was going to end, but I did like how it was done. I also liked how the ending, the ending was kind of open but not too open, which I think was good, and uh, how it kind of came back to some of the rules as well of the notebook and. Um, just how that we have a big reveal of Kira at the end, and it doesn't quite go as planned. And uh, yeah, I thought it was really good. So this the, this last version, I'm going to give it a, a four, a solid four out of five. I then read uh, Mort, a Discworld big comic by Terry Pratchett. Now Mort is one of my favourite Discworld books, and obviously we've got death in it as well. It was really cool to read this, and the artwork's very got kind of you know visually appealing. The only thing is, is that they had to you know, trim quite a lot of the book out of the uh, out of the comic, so it is really more of a comic than a graphic novel. Um, but I did still enjoy it because I'm, you know, a Terry Pratchett geek, so I gave it a four out of five, and it was worth the five pound I paid for this in a random charity shop. Uh, yeah. Then I read uh, The Perfect Murder by Peter James. So this was originally published as part of like the BBC's Quick Read scheme, and what I didn't realise is like this much of the book is um, just promo for, uh, what, which one is it? Dead Simple by Peter James, which I've already read. Sorry, I'm going out of focus. So, that was kind of annoying, but um, yeah, it was a good enough book. First of all, you know it's gotta be pretty good because if it was originally published as a quick reads book and has now made it into kind of being published by its own right, that's pretty cool. It's also now a major UK theatrical production, which I'd be up for going to see. And I like the irony of it, so it's called The Perfect Murder, but basically the murder is not perfect. And uh, the ending was really good as well. I kind of saw it coming just before the end, but um, yeah, I was just it was a, just a pretty good short crime story. And I think if you've not read Peter James, it'd be a good way to get into him. Another four out of five. Then I read The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett. I'll give this probably a 4.5 out of five. It was very good. This is basically, actually, do we have a blurb? Had the dogs not taken exception to the strange van parked in the royal grounds, the Queen might have never learnt of the Westminster Travelling Library's weekly visits to the palace. 
but finding herself at its steps, she goes up to apologise for all the yapping and ends up taking a novel by Ivy Compton Burnett, last borrowed in 1989. Duff read though it proves to be, upbringing demands she finishes it, and, so as not to appear rude, she withdraws another. This second, more fortunate choice of book, awakens in Her Majesty a passion for reading so great that her public duties begin to suffer. And so, as she devours work by everyone from Hardy to Bruckner to Proust to Samuel Beckett, her equerries conspire to bring the Queen's literary odyssey to a close. Subversive and hugely enjoyable, The Uncommon Reader offers the perfect argument for reading, written by one of its great champions, Alan Bennett. And so as you can tell from that, the main, the main character of this is the Queen. Basically she gets really into reading and then later into writing as well, which builds up to what the end is, which I'm not going to say what it is, but it was good. It was the perfect ending to it. And I think it does. It just encourages reading. It makes you reconnect with the magic of reading. But equally, this is, I think, a book for readers. You know what I mean? You wouldn't necessarily like this if you hadn't read much. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I always liked Bennett and uh, yeah, like a totally, totally worth reading for sure. What? I'm tired. Sorry, my reviewing might not be up to scratch at the moment. But uh, oh, and then next up, I'm going to read some more Bennett. I'm going to read The Laying On of Hands and Father, Father, Burning Bright from Four Stories. Mainly because the other two stories are The Clothes They Stood Up In and The Lady in the Van. And I've read both of those. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to this. But on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.